Today in Randy's Tips, Randy will explain how to make free AI voices less robotic. You sound like a robot. No, I don't. I can't believe you. What a mean thing to say. I'm telling mom. Sorry, sis. Besides audio tips, Randy will share some techniques how to overcome the limitations of Create Studio Pro talking actions when building a conversation. Keep watching, and Randy will show you how. This is Randy's Tips, with another Create Studio Pro tutorial. Hey, thank you Dominic and Charlotte for introducing this video. And yes, I will explain some techniques to make AI voices seem less robotic. By giving them some variety, it may make them seem more natural. Notice I did not say this would create realistic voices. Using most text-to-speech generators cannot create realistic voice. There are several websites or programs claiming realistic AI voices, but they come at a cost. And frankly, I don't think they're that good yet. One comment before I get started. If you are creating a video for your company or business, you should consider a professional voiceover artist. Listen to the quality of this voiceover from a friend of mine. Thanks so much, Randy. You know, I, of course, couldn't agree more that the human voice is just going to be hard to replicate in an artificial environment. There's so many nuances to each and every human voice, and every human voice is unique. So you really have an opportunity to find a voice that truly connects with your message and can connect with your audience well. The other thing a human voice can bring is emotion and personality. You can show excitement. You can show warmth and richness. You can do all those things so easily with the human voice that are just really hard to replicate. Another thing is a greater ability to connect with your audience. So many times we hear artificial voices and it's easy to tune out. But when there's a real human voice conveying that message, it can draw the listener in and help them engage more in your content. Also, with a real human voice actor, you get feedback. Oftentimes, written copy makes a lot of sense on paper, but when you say it out loud, it doesn't come through as clear. If you have a real human who's really trying to say those words, they can give you, the content creator, the writer, feedback on how to say those words so that they make sense spoken out loud. Thanks again, Randy, for this opportunity. I hope that this was helpful and that you'll really think about engaging and using human voice actors as you create content. John is available for male voiceovers, and I have included his contact information in the description. Notice how a professional studio recording and trained voice is so much better than my voice on a Blue Yeti microphone in my office. Okay, now onto the tutorial where I will cover two topics. How to insert emotion into text-to-speech voices, and how to overcome Create Studio Pro talking actions limitations. What limitations? I don't have limitations. Uh, right. To create text-to-speech in Create Studio Pro, click the media icon and select text-to-speech. You can type in or cut and paste your character's lines. Here is where you can adjust the speed and pitch using either the slider bars or type in the value. Choosing different speed and pitch values in your dialogue not only provides variety, it can enhance the emotion you want to convey. A higher pitch and faster speed shows excitement, whereas a higher pitch and slower speed indicates nervousness or fear. Suddenly lowering the pitch can indicate vulnerability, uncertainty, or a desire to hide. When your speech conveys emotion, it just feels more human. Speed and pitch are the major techniques to make text-to-speech less robotic, but they are not the only controls available. Another control you can have inside Create Studio is pacing. You can use commas or dashes to insert a slight pause into the message. For longer pauses, use Create Studio's pause statement. Tip. The pause can be a fraction of a second where pause equals zero dot number. Click on Generate Speech and then Preview to hear if it sounds right to you. When you are satisfied, click on Import button to bring the audio into your project. To add the audio to your timeline, click and drag it onto the canvas. The last control you can use is Volume. 
When selecting an audio track in Create Studio Pro, you can decrease volume from the Settings menu. But unfortunately, it does not allow an increase in volume. When I type in 200% and hit Enter, it will reset to 100% as that is the maximum value allowed. In cases where you want the voice louder, you will need to export the audio from Create Studio Pro and then import your audio file into an external program. In my case, I use the free software Audacity. It has good crowdsourced documentation and YouTube explainer videos. To use these various controls takes planning. So when I create a script, I don't just write the words being said, but also document the AI voice used along with pitch and speed. This is critical. I can't tell you how many times I produced a video and decided to go back and change the dialogue. And when you do that, you don't want to try to figure out which voice you used. I admit this is tedious because each change of pitch or speed means you have to break the dialogue into small pieces. Here I recorded No I Don't with a speed of 1.2 and a pitch of 4, generated the audio file, and then imported it into the project. Then I copied into the dialog box the next statement. I can't believe you. What a mean thing to say. With a speed of 0 0.9 and a pitch of 0. Again, generated the audio file and imported that into the project. As we saw earlier, when you import text-to-speech audio into the project, Create Studio Pro puts the audio file in the project media. When you hover your mouse over each file, you will see they have the name text-to-speech. If you are going to generate several audio files like this project will, it is a good idea to stay organized and rename the files. I will rename the first to No I Don't and rename the second to Mean Thing to Say. Now when I drag them onto the canvas, you will notice on the timeline they use the file name. Perform the same actions for all the speaking parts and then move them to the appropriate time on the timeline. Unless the characters are talking over each other, I like to place the audio on a single track just like this. Okay, let's switch to learning how to overcome the limitations of the talking actions in Create Studio Pro. One limitation is that Create Studio Pro does not have the capability to sync the character's lips to the audio track. If this is something you want to do for your project, see my Sync Lips tutorial. There is a link to it in the description. The other big limitation is fitting the talking action to the length of your audio. The solution for real long audio is to stretch the talking action out by clicking on this vertical bar with your mouse and drag it to the right. However, you cannot drag it to the left to make the talking actions shorter. This can be a real problem. There are several methods I use to address this limitation. One I use quite often is that I will pad the dialogue to last as long as the character's talking action. For example, in the opening scene, Charlotte's original statement was, No, I don't. I am telling mom, which lasted for about 1.6 seconds. But the shortest talking action for Charlotte is a little over 3 seconds. So I added, I can't believe you what a mean thing to say, to fit the duration of the talking action. Another method I use is the jump cut. I use this method several times in the opening scene. I set up the scene so there are two camera angles, one facing Charlotte in front of the bookcase, and the second facing Dominic in front of the I Love design wall. When Charlotte finished her line, I cut to Dominic for him to say his lines, then cut back to Charlotte for her next line. What makes these cuts believable is using a background with multiple angles of the same room or environment. My project for the beginning of this tutorial used several design studio backgrounds shown here. Here is a technique that can be used when the talking action is slightly longer than the audio file. 
speed up the character's action using the clip speed effect. I used that technique with Dominic in the opening scene. But wait, the clip speed effect cannot be applied to a character's action. Well, it turns out that you can, but you have to publish the character's talking action as a video and bring that back into your project. I created a tutorial on how to clip speed a character's action, and there is a link to it in the description. There is one last technique I will share. You may have noticed that Charlotte did not move her lips when she said, I'm telling mom. I wanted to convey anger, so instead of using a talking action, I used the frustrated action even though it did not have a moving mouth. In this case, it was more important to show the angry emotion than it was to lip sync her line. Well, there you go. That is how to control text-to-speech to convey emotion and overcome the limitations of the built-in talking actions. Hey everyone, have a good day and happy creating!